patterns are really essential when you're playing guitar, but maybe not for the reason you think. A lot of players start memorizing patterns thinking that if they learn a lot of patterns, then they can solo over anything in automatic kind of mode. Yes, it's kind of true, but there is also more. Patterns can free yourself from the anxiety that you might have sometimes uh, when you have to improvise, thinking about what am I going to say within these three, four minutes of improvisation? I don't know what to say. Well, patterns can help you with that. They can help influence what is coming next, and they can help you find new ideas within these patterns and develop them. And we're going to talk about that today. So that's coming up. Hi, my name is David Wallman. Welcome to this channel, which is all about helping guitar players like you find your voice on the instrument, develop it to tell your own musical personality. Really, when I say players like you, I say players like me too. We're all in the same boat, really. And the idea here is to, to find little, little concepts small ideas to incorporate into our playing and develop them into something new because we're all different. That's really what it's about. In other words, if I'm showing you a lick, don't feel like you have to play it exactly note per note. Just extract from that idea the thing that you like and work on it as, uh, as you're developing that musical being that is you. Okay, today we're gonna talk about uh, patterns and we're gonna, we're gonna work in the key of E Dorian. But before we do that, there's a fundamental concept that we need to agree on. And that concept is that if we were to choose between rhythm and, uh, and melody, the most important thing, I believe, in improvisation, in this kind of setting, is rhythm. Because we are playing with other people. And if uh, we play the right pitches without the right rhythm, it sounds really, really off. It's kind of like... Uh, someone joining a conversation, uh, not really knowing the, the language that is spoken. Let's say that I'm joining a Chinese uh, conversation and I know a few Chinese words and I just throw them like that. Uh, but there's no flow of words. There's not one word after the other that uh, makes sense. And uh, people are going to automatically um, not understand me if I'm just using random words. However, if I... Um, if I join the conversation and I, I uh, use the right rhythm flow, I might fool some people, letting them think that I do speak that language. So it's really, really important to have that flow of notes. Let, let me demonstrate that musically really quick. I've got a loop here, and we're in the key of E Dorian. And over this loop, if I um, start developing um, ideas using the right notes, Sounds fine, right? Now, if I if I play the same right notes but with a rhythm that is completely out, it sounds very um, you know unprofessional and very uh, clumsy. However, if I have the right rhythm. I play some notes that are outside of that, it's still going to be accepted. A little more than um, if I played the, the wrong notes. So that, that was my quick demonstration. So we need to agree on that, that the rhythm is really important. And for that, what I usually recommend students is to find a subdivision that they're comfortable playing over. And usually it's 16th notes. That's, I think, the simplest subdivision that you can have in the biggest bang for your buck. You can, you can basically communicate with a lot of other musicians using that. So 16th notes, that simply means that over uh, a track like this, I subdivide every beat by four. So this is in the back of your mind. Now, that doesn't mean that you're going to play 16th notes all the time. That would sound pretty, pretty boring, really. But it sounds something like this. Right? But it means that whenever you play a note, it needs to fall under one of those subdivisions. So it could be something like this. Yeah. 
Okay, so in other words, um, whatever I played fell under one of those. I could make some longer notes. But those notes do fall in the sub subdivisions. So that's the, the first thing. You need to have that subdivision in the back of your mind constantly as you're going through things because that's going to free a little bit about, of your anxiety when you're playing over something. Uh, now you have something you can hold on to. And uh, if you hit a wrong note, if you miss a note or something, if it's within that subdivision, it's going to be a lot more accepted than if you have a completely wrong rhythm with a wrong note. So that's the first thing. Now, now that we understand that, and talk about patterns a little bit, and this is a great way to, to get new ideas as you're going through something. What I mean by a pattern, it's a, a small, short, um, melodic idea, motif, guitar motif. So if we're using, for example, the first position of the E minor pentatonic scale, and um, those are, uh, that's a five note scale. If I add the major second and the major sixth, I would have the Dorian mode. And if I use this, um, and I find a motif that does something like this, for example. Or something like that, maybe. That would be a motif. So what happens to that motif? What can we extract from this idea that we can reapply somewhere else? Well, um, there are several characteristics here. And we, think, we need to think in terms of characteristics. There is a flow of notes. So it goes back to that subdivision. So, okay, there's a flow of notes here. So, and we, we have one, two, three, four, five, five notes. So that's a rhythm characteristic. Uh, we also have a, a direction characteristic where really what we're doing here, we are ascending one, two, three, four, ascending four notes and then descending one. So ascending four, one, two, three, four, and then descending one. And if we look even deeper, we're ascending four notes. And the fifth note that we're descending to is the note right in between the one, two, third note and the fifth note. Okay, all this, I'm really, um, I know I'm talking uh, a lot. I'm, I'm extracting everything I can think about that idea, but that happens instantly, right? But you just need to be aware of that. So if we can apply this characteristic somewhere else on the fretboard. Um, this would share the same characteristic, this idea. Right? I've got five notes. Rhythmically, it's da ka da ka da, da too. And I'm ascending five no uh, four notes, one, two, three, four. And the fifth note is in between the third and the fourth note. Okay? All right, so we're going to work on that a little bit in the same key right here. So we started here, that idea right here. And by the way, watch the video till the end because you can get the tabs for this and the, the backing track that I'm playing over. But that's what we're going to use, and we're going to consider the full fretboard. And really that idea uses the first two strings, right? We're going to descend that to the, the previous note that we encounter in the scale. So again, you need to consider the full fretboard here. That would be the next one, right? Uh, you see, I don't know my fretboard <laughs> well enough. That kind of thing. So if we use this over the backing track, of the idea, right? Now, because we know that rhythm is more important than the choice of notes, that means that if we're playing one of these patterns and we had a wrong note like that, it would still be accepted as long as you don't like freak out and um, just make people know that that was a mistake. You know, if you're playing something um, and you miss a note, and that like crumbles everything else you do, that's going to be a wrong note. But if you continue and catch up, it 
it's going to be accepted. So that's an, a concentration exercise that you need to do. But the first step is really to work on a pattern that you have and think about the characteristics of that pattern, so the rhythm, subdivision, and the direction of the notes, and develop that across the whole fretboard. Not because that's the way you need to improvise all the time, but it's going to solidify your knowledge of the fretboard. And what happens really when you're playing, the more you play, if you um, actively think of the notes that you're playing, like absorb those notes, there is um, an invisible connection that happens between your inside, your musical being inside, and the outcome. Just like when you're talking, right? And I say this all the time, but if you're learning a new language, first you really have to think about how do you produce those new sounds? How do you place your tongue and your throat and all that to make those sounds? And, and then it's just instinct, like instincts, right? When I learned English, that's what was happening. It is very mechanical first. My first language is French, and it was very mechanical. Some new words are, some new sounds in, in the English language are not found in the French language. So it is very mechanical. I have to think, analyze all that. But now it flows out, sometimes too much. <laughs> but musically, it's the same. Like I'm sure when you first learned the minor pentatonic scale, you had to think about the shape, really. But at some point, what happens, you play a note, and you can imagine the next one. And you start phrasing, making, making these ideas your own. You're in control of your music instead of um, your fingers controlling your music. And that's what should happen with those patterns. And that's why we're developing that all across. Or all across the fretboard, regardless of the pattern. So that is one pattern. Um, and then you can develop that across other strings, but eventually when you're, when you're improvising, it'll just come out um, in a natural way. Plus you know that you can't really make any wrong notes as long as you have that rhythm. that, right? That kind of thing. Let's um, take a look at other possible patterns. And we're really going simple here. So we have this. Maybe we could have something like um, like this. Okay, what are the characteristics here? We have one, two, three, four, five, five notes, all descending. The rhythm, deca deca da, consistent again. Okay, so we could develop that. It doesn't need to be exact, but you, you try to replicate some of the essence of the idea in your improv. That'll make it more organic and, and sound a lot more freeing because you don't have to focus on the notes, really. Like that. I'm gonna use that. What I was, what I was playing there. That could be a new idea. Maybe that. I'm going from one pattern, develop that. And then maybe I play this a little differently and that influences, creates a new idea.
that is a good example of using notes that are really outside and, and uh, as long as you have the characteristics of your pattern, you need to develop that. Really want to encourage you to, to give that a try. Find a very simple pattern, extract from the pattern the essence that makes that pattern what it is. So again, think of direction of the notes, uh, rhythm value, maybe even a technique, maybe a pattern, uh, a characteristic of the pattern could be a bend. You've got some bends in there. Maybe. And you develop that across the fretboard. I promise that this will come out very naturally in your improv at some point if you work on this. Um, you can download a free backing track, the one that I was using here, Extended. It's all in E Dorian. It's part of the one chord backing track pack that is on guitarplayback.com. I'll link that below. A collection of one chord backing tracks that sound great that help you develop some new ideas on the fretboard with any kind of mode that you want. There's some typical chords, minor seven, major seven, dominant seven, but also some more complex chords like minor major seven, more exotic stuff, uh, sharp five, that kind of thing. Um, anyways, thank you. You can download this for free and uh, a few of these pattern ideas. All you need to do is visit the link below and uh, enter your best email address and I'll be sending you that right away. And if this was your first visit here, thank you. You should consider subscribing because I've got about three videos coming every single week helping guitar players like us find our voice, develop it, and find new ideas and just have fun on the instrument and express ourselves in a musical way. Thank you so much. Remember, nobody could play the way you play on the guitar. It's all about developing that voice. I'll see you next time.